The new M1 Mac is an exceptional machine. There are many videos already out there about its performance, some of its shortcomings, etc. So in this video we'll skip that and cover how to add more ports for beginners. This video is for the less technically savvy who just want their machine to work with their cameras, USB cables, internet cables, and any other digital accessories. We'll cover from the cheapest to the most expensive options, increasing the number of ports and speed of those ports as we move along. We'll also cover a ludicrous mode for a ridiculous number of ports. If you haven't already, check out my other video on how to use up to 5 more screens with your new iMac. Let's hop in. The cheapest option currently on the market is a simple USB-C dongle. If you're a first-time Mac buyer who's just getting into the flow of things, the new Macs come with a smaller version of USB that's faster, reversible, and takes less space, but it might be incompatible with older cables such as Lightning to USB regular. These are typically around $20 to $30 on Amazon and I'll link a well-reviewed model below. These come with the basic necessities like USB that fit most devices and your old lightning cables, and most of the time include an HDMI port that sometimes supports 4K at its finest and sometimes don't, and only run 4K at half the refresh rate or 30Hz. It'll look choppy and be unpleasant to use if it's 30Hz. At least in my experience, I've had two fail over the past few years out of six or seven that I've bought, since it's a race to the bottom to see who can make the cheapest dongle. Another downside is that these are typically limited with how many USB 3 ports they have and how many ports overall, and whether they run the ports at full speed. A middle tier option is a USB-C hub. Unfortunately, I don't own any since I decided to spend a bit extra for a Thunderbolt 3 hub which we'll cover shortly, but USB-C hubs are a good middle tier option that can be typically found for $100 to $150. USB-C hubs have more ports and more display options typically. At this point, it's worth mentioning that the two options we just covered are good for basic necessities, but let me introduce USB-C versus Thunderbolt. If you do more data intensive operations like copy to external drives or running extra screens for your workflow, then I'd recommend upgrading to Thunderbolt 3. And the reason? Simple. With dongles and hubs that use USB-C, we have a variety of USB 3 and monitor ports, but those ports use data and need bandwidth. Each USB 3 port can run up to 5 gigabits per second, but assuming you're copying data to disks or running screens over USB or monitor connections, that bandwidth is quickly used up. With all of those things plugged in, the dongle or hub will have to choose which connection to prioritize, so if you have more demanding tasks, then it might be worth considering upgrading to Thunderbolt 3, which has four times the maximum total bandwidth of USB-C. With Thunderbolt 3, you can connect single super speed accessories to it, like fast network connections or fast storage. My personal favorite is the Thunderbolt 3 hub by Caldigit. This one has numerous USB 3 ports that are full speed and make complete use of the speed available over each of the Mac's Thunderbolt ports. With this, you can plug in an SD card, a few displays, external drives, a network adapter, and it has its own Ethernet port for internet. And you don't need to compromise on dividing the available bandwidth between the connections. It's the priciest option at around $250. Or is it? We're not done yet. Ludicrous mode is the following, using a Thunderbolt hub to split one high-speed Thunderbolt port into three, and then connecting a ludicrous amount of these Thunderbolt 3 hubs to the Thunderbolt hub. Caldigit was kind enough to send over one of their Thunderbolt 4 element hubs for this purpose. I don't know why you would do this with up to three hubs, but it is possible. You never know everyone's workflow, and some people like audio or video professionals may need many, many connections at once, so this is how. It's pretty straightforward, you just plug in the Element Hub, and then plug in the Caldigit Hubs. M1 Macs are unfortunately limited in how many displays they can support by default, but be sure to check out my other video on how to work around that limit and run up to 6 displays total on your M1 machine. That's all for today's video, I hope you enjoyed this brief overview on adding ports to your M1 iMac and how to achieve ludicrous mode. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. I'll leave links in the description below to all mentioned dongles, hubs, and adapters, and a small proceed of anything bought through those links does go towards buying more materials and helps support the channel.